peace will be with the elect of God. Today's uh, Mass is for the intention of Carol Diaz. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Today the Church celebrates the memorial of St. Charles of Luanda and companions, um, martyrs in the late 1800s in Uganda, the nation of Uganda in Africa. Uh, through that martyrdom came a great spread of the Catholic faith in Uganda. This is a national holiday in Uganda, and it's a, a massive celebration honoring these saints. Let's come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanda and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered him that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing in his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Spirit will teach 
teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to, Simon, to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. This is not the first time we have heard this Gospel in the Easter season. It is a very important Gospel in the life of Peter and the Church. Uh, I'd like to focus on a different angle this morning than I think others that I've shared. Uh, this God, the Gospel of John is written in Greek. And in Greek, when Jesus asks Simon Peter the first time, do you love me? He uses the word agape for love. Agape means love to the point of death with total sacrifice and total commitment. Simon Peter, do you agape me? And Simon Peter says in response, Lord, you know that I, he uses a different word, he uses hilly, which means I love you and care for you like a friend. So Jesus asked him, do you love me sacrificially? He answers, I love you and care for you like a friend. Second time, Jesus asked the question, do you agape me? Simon Peter answers the second time, I hilly you. So the third time in the Greek, Jesus says, do you feel me, me like a friend? And Simon Peter says, you know that I do. So Jesus is uh, testing Simon Peter's love and uh, also is trying to prepare him for what lies ahead because eventually he will be arrested in Rome and he will be, uh, because of his witness to Christ, he will be invited to martyrdom. Uh, our tradition says that Peter was crucified by Jesus, but not wishing, not feeling uh, worthy of being crucified like Jesus straight up. His crucifixion was upside down, and he died, which must have been unbelievably torturous. And so the words of Jesus, when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, uh, was a prediction of his death. Now, Simon Peter wasn't the only one called to this kind of agape love, total self-giving love. As we see in the first reading, this has been Paul's call as well. Almost every place that Paul has gone, he ends up getting arrested and brought to the authorities in whatever is the town or village where he's going. He's constantly being pushed uh, in his witness to Christ. And here we see that King Agrippa himself, this is one of the sons of the wicked Herod the Great, and like father, like son, he says, this is a bad guy. And he's called in to help judge the case. And eventually Paul will be sent to Rome because he is a Roman citizen, where he will face his final trial, and he will end his life in martyrdom and witness in agape love to Jesus. And today we celebrate the uh, martyrdom of the United Saints, St. Charles Luanda and his companions. These were young, young folks, some of them were boys, young men, ages 12, 14, I think the oldest one was 20. 
and there were about 24 of them, and there were pages in the court of the tribal king, uh, the king Mwanga. And King Mwanga was homosexual. And so he, uh, he wanted to sexually uh, use and abuse all of these young men. And this was an accepted practice at the court. He was a pedophile. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, the Christian missionaries started coming into Uganda and teaching them about the true meaning of sexuality as God intended. And so they understood that this was not acceptable to God. This was not the way that God had created human beings and created sexuality. So uh, they resisted the king's advances. And because of that, because they were witnessing to Christ, he rounded them all up and he uh, led them on a forced march for a couple of days to this particular place where they were tortured and burned to death one by one. And the king hoped that this would terrorize everybody into acceding to his wishes, it had the exact opposite effect. The witness of these young men was so inspiring that there were massive conversions to Christianity in Uganda. And today it is uh, the, one of the most Catholic nations in the entire world as a result of the witness, as a result of them living this agape love for Christ. And so that's the call for all of us. Uh, the Lord is happy that we're his friends, and he's grateful that we have uh, uh, a filial love for him. But he calls us, in the end, to self-dying, self-giving, agape love. That may involve the witness of our lives and martyrdom, probably not. It will involve daily deaths and dyings to our selfishness and our desires. It may involve embracing things in life that we don't want to invite and embrace, but we embrace them because of our love for Christ. So we pray today as we reflect on St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Charles, and his companions for the grace of loving Jesus with full, total commitment and love. The scripture calls agape love. May we love you, O Lord, in our lives in that great way. Please stand as we bring our prayers and needs to God, our Heavenly Father. For bishops entrusted with shepherding God's flock, may the Holy Spirit bless them with fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God give them wisdom in leading with justice and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are incarcerated, may the love of Christ give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of faith gathered here, may the Holy Spirit increase our love for God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, may they soon rest in his peace in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray for our own special intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones whose names are listed on our Easter Memorial Board. We pray for an end to violence, murder, and racism in our world. For peace in Ukraine. For a pro-life culture and protection of the judges and all who support the cause of life. Uh, and we also pray for members of our own community who are facing uh, medical challenges, significant medical challenges. We have several people having surgery today. We have people undergoing testing today and people waiting for uh, medical procedures to begin. Let us uh, pray that Jesus will bring them health and healing and the wisdom and knowledge of his presence and love. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. And finally, we conclude on this first Friday, we remember the Sacred Heart of Jesus, conclude with the prayers of the Sacred Heart. O oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, and sufferings of this day, in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and with your own Sacred Heart. And I pray, Lord, for all of your particular intentions and the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, 
and that you will help us to understand the mercy, forgiveness, and love that you offer us, and to always have a special and tender devotion to your sacred heart. And we pray this prayer and all prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, St. Charles and Companions, poured out by Christ to glorify his name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the people bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Charles and his companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs. May what help them to endure torment, we pray, make us, in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So tomorrow morning at St. Louis Cathedral at 10 a.m., our own parishioner, Jody DiMaggio, will be ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of New Orleans. So we uh, congratulate him and his family, and we want to pray for them uh, as he begins his ministry soon, July, at St. Clement Rome Church. He will be with us three times in June to celebrate Mass, including Mass and Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks, which we will announce. Tomorrow evening is our International Food Fest uh, in the auditorium at, uh, from 5 to 8.30 p.m. We have 28 food vendors, and uh, it's going to be really, really nice with music and everything else. And Sunday morning at 10, 10 a.m., we have a fun run in Metairie Cemetery, um, and we invite you to participate in that as well. Details and everything in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great weekend. And we will pray day eight of the Pentecost Athena for the gift of wisdom right after Mass. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God and you him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the Lord of souls. Amen.